Hello and welcome to the first time that we've done a, a Hebden Bridge Christmas art chain. Um, it's a wonderful idea where we all get to blather on about our art and the crafts that we make. Uh, there's several of us going to be talking throughout the course of the evening. Um, I'll try and remember who's on it. We've got uh, Fiona Armour, she's already here, and Kate Lysett, uh, Dorothy Ann Simister, uh, Kath Baker, uh, Rue Waterhouse, Julia Ogden, uh, Hannah Nunn and Toby Cottrell. Uh, the, the idea is that we'll start a little bit of a conversation uh, about our work, our process, uh, things that we've made for Christmas. Uh, so a couple of us will be talking uh, and then kind of like pass the bat on. So whoever's been interviewed will become the next interviewer uh, and talk to the next artist in the chain. Uh, and as it progresses through the evening, uh, one of us drops off the Zoom and somebody else will be joining. So um, it, it should be quite entertaining, really. Um, the dress rehearsal was certainly uh, very entertaining. So we're looking forward to it tremendously. So uh, I shall start things rolling by asking uh, Kate, if you want to tell us a little bit about your work. Uh, I mean, I'm particularly fascinated by the way that you use gold uh, in so many of your paintings. Uh, um, what, what's the reason with that then? What's, what's behind that? Well, there's, there's, there's a lot more gold in my paintings than people think, because um, if you know my work, then, it, you know, it's, um, it's signature thing is that it's got gold stitching and it's got gold leaf on it. But um, there's quite a lot of, um, there's gold underneath everything. Um, so I've got, I don't know if you're going to be able to see these, but I bought some, here's some I prepared earlier. These are kind of early stage samples. So there's, there's a lot of is gold powdered pigment and gold ink underneath everything. So that when I layer ink, I work a lot in ink, um, the, the gold kind of shows through from underneath. So it's almost like an enamel effect. So I kind of layer, layer lots of colors. And then the final stages are, are this um, gold stitching. I don't know if you can see little bits of gold stitching and then um and then i put gold leaf on it which is just highlighting there yeah oh, wonderful. So it, uh, it's good stuff it's lovely stuff um and i started doing it i mean i'm textile designer by background so fascinated by well everything stitched and joined together and patterns in particular and then when i moved to hebden bridge and started painting landscape which was about 15 years ago and I, I just used to paint abstracts and patterns before but Hebden Bridge landscape kind of rolls in a way that was completely new to me a girl from Suffolk where you, we don't have hills in Suffolk. Um, certainly not hills <laughs> like we have here. Uh, what sorry? Certainly not hills like we have here. No when I learned to drive in Suffolk uh, we had to drive 11 miles to find a hill to learn to do a hill start. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so the landscape that, and the way that the gold enables your eyes to kind of, uh, you know, exaggerate a shape or move along a course, uh, follow a path. It's a way kind of, of guiding your eye um, in a kind of a compositional way, um, and, you know, and, it, and it's decorative. And, and one of the things I really like about it is if people hang the pictures um, in natural light, then as the light shifts around throughout the day, you might find, you know, that a hill is highlighted in the morning and then at the end of the day, you've got kind of the stitching somewhere else in the picture. So it, it kind of, it changes, it's, it's moving all the time. So I kind of like, I don't know, I, I, like, I like the way it's, um, it, it changes all the time, depending on the angle you're looking at it. Yeah. And when I do the, when I do the prints, because I didn't want to be mass producing things that didn't have my hand in them. And also the prints, uh, I do gicle prints of the landscape paintings um, they seem they seem kind of rather flat and not have this lovely movement that um, that the gold underneath gives you and the gold leaf. So I started to hand finish all the prints and, um, and yeah. And so sometimes you know the stitching is in different places, the hand finishing touches are in different places. So it's just a way of everything that goes out is mine. <laughs> it's not it's not mass produced. I didn't want to go down that line. Yeah, no, no, well that certainly comes across. Um, so. Is the is the gold stitching on the prints that you do? Is that hand stitching, or do you machine stitch those? It is it's machine stitched. Yeah. Like free, free machine stitching. Yeah, 
yeah, some of it's free machine, machine stitching, some of it's just on a on a foot that I hack at to get it to the right shape so I can see exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's good fun. It's a textile, you can always spot an ex-textile designer. <laughs> um, I think it's just a certain way of um, abstracting and controlling and um, uh, we're just seeing patterns and everything. Was what, that your what, background then? Was that your, um, what you did at art college? Textiles, I, art design? Yeah, well, it was, it was fine art, but I specialised in textiles. I wanted to do furnishing textiles, but ended up doing, um, I, I designed uniforms for years, actually, yeah. <laughs> which, was, which was quite limiting in terms of colour, because well, it was a job where I could draw, and, you know, I never thought I'd get one of them. Um, but, uh, but it was quite limiting, because often you'd just be given, you know, a compliment slip, and the building society would say, well, our shades are... <laughs> shades of slime and we want 40 prints in shades of slime so, so then when I was, did that professionally I did that professionally for about eight years yeah oh, right. wow. I didn't know that yeah no acres and acres of, of, of prints and things that were turned into ties and waistcoats and shirts and skirts and yeah and then this this started out as a bit of a rebellion so um you know being able to paint in the colours that I wanted and have this kind of opulence that I was not allowed at work where I was limited to a, a colour palette of three very often. Um, yeah, was it the Liverpool tram and there they had just black, grey and lemon Pantone shades and I had to do their whole tram uniform. Very oh, wow. uninspiring. <laughs> so do, you so think the do you think the restrictions and limitations uh, were actually a really good thing for you because it made you want to sort of move in the direction which you've gone in, which Absolutely. is fantastic, you know, very yeah. successful for you. Yeah, it was, it, but it was a complete rebellion. It was just kind of, in a way, letting up all that het up colour that I wasn't allowed to let out at work, going home and just, you know, getting blue fingers. And um, and Dad bought me the gold leaf one Christmas for a treat. And I've, uh, it's a very expensive habit, but I've had it in my... Uh, I've always got it now. You're not inclined to go back to some uniforms if someone asks me some really interesting ones. I've got uh, Mr. Wilson's second liners in mind. You, have, have you seen them? Oh, yes. <laughs> the, the, the brass band, because they wear amazing uniforms. And I can yeah. see you designing some uniforms for those guys. Yeah, good colour and a lot of gold. There's a lot of potential there. But Oh, yeah. Um, no, there were, there were some uniforms I designed that um, if I was to go into somewhere where they were wearing them, I wouldn't have admitted, admitted that they were mine because I wouldn't have been popular. <laughs> there was a holiday company somewhere in tangerine blazers and that was my fault. Oh, wow. <laughs> have you Sorry, thought about putting little characters into some of your paintings in these uniforms? I guess no, <laughs> nobody but you would sort of get the joke. It'd be a, a really brilliant visual gag. <laughs> yeah. Too late now. Never mind. It's not too late. Plenty I more paintings happening. Paint now. Have you I got more paintings on the horizon? Have you got uh, particular things that are coming up? I've got. Um, because you've I've just had the coffee can exhibition, haven't you? That that all the, the Halifax buildings. Yeah, um, which which was lovely. We had to have it a bit of a kind of a lockdown. Um, well, a lockdown opening, so it was on very much kind of, you know, one to one private views. It wasn't quite as buzzy as normal, unfortunately. But, you know, it was still nice to see people having been, you know, forgetting how to talk to people cooped up in the studio for six months. And it was nice to have something to work towards, which was lovely. Um, but I did find that the, uh, you know, when we couldn't go anywhere and the uh, being in Halifax, the idea of being in Halifax was quite it was exotic because it wasn't in heaven bridge <laughs> um and i found that my paintings took on a, a, um quite a foreign feel so i did one of the peace hall that ended up looking quite venetian and there's this one it, it's got quite a foreign feel though hasn't it especially now that they've uh, changed from the cobblestones the way that they've changed it it feels very italian to me now it does and it's it's the light i think the light the reflected stone reflects the light so it always feels light in there even on a uh, a wet yorkshire day and that one of the Peace Hall, I think, kind of looks uh, uh, a bit Roman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the colours, I think, it's hot stone. So that's, yeah, it's from when I crave the exoticism of Halifax after being cooped up in the valley for four months. 
There's some wonderful buildings in Halifax. Yeah. People don't realise. You know, it's really nice that you did an exhibition about the Halifax buildings because there are some absolutely fantastic buildings there. There are some fantastic buildings. And the same could be said of Keithley and, and Bradford, Bradford particularly, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just don't think uh, there's too much to do in Bradford. And they demolished yeah. half the good ones. Yeah, yeah, always the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, feeling festive. Um, have you got particular plans for this Christmas? What, what does a Hebden Christmas mean for you guys, for you and your family? Have you got particular sort of quirky little routines and things that you do that's like just your family and anyone else would think oh that's odd <laughs> well we don't usually spend Christmas in Hebden so we're going to have to make our own special ones this year because um, usually we have big get-togethers down kind of in Wiltshire where my family all are or Surrey where my husband's family are um, but I think um, at some point, Studley Pike will come into it because it's quite a special place. And we'll either walk up there, depending on the weather, or yeah. Daniel and I will take turns to run up there at some point during the day. <laughs> um, and we have been here for the carols around the Christmas tree, but that probably won't be happening either. So, yeah, we'll be making the best of it. There'll be a, there'll be a woody walk at some point or a high walk if it's snowy. It would be wonderful if it snowed. That's what my kids have said. The one thing that could rescue this Christmas would be if it was a white one. Yeah. So. I'd like that, please. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Fiona, I've been, I've been looking a lot at your work this week and I noticed that I kind of feel the need to tame mine. And I think it's to do with my own personal fears of A, height and B, the sea. The sea for me is definitely best viewed from the beach. <laughs> Tried sailing, didn't like it. Whereas yours, you went through some dramatic change and you, I mean, I know you used to do watercolours and you used to do animals and suddenly you've got these kind of um, very raw landscapes with thick, thick oils and, you know, feeling like you're in the sea or feeling like you're high up above. I feel quite, ver I get vertigo looking at some of your Lakeland ones. What made you have that dramatic change? I, basically, I started sailing. Um, ah. I, I, was, I was getting a bit frustrated with the watercolour landscapes. Um, I, I'm a bit of a fan of Ashley Jackson kind of going way back. And I, I was trying to be really faithful to the, the colours and, the, you know, that's a sort of Prussian blue, raw sienna, burnt sienna. And I, I was I'd kind of bored myself a little bit. And I, I was just not, it just didn't work for me. And then kind of completely coincidentally, I saw somebody wanting crew for a Fastnet campaign. And I thought, oh, I've heard, I've heard of that race. That sounds like a bit of an adventure for the summer. So I, I started sailing and went, went straight in offshore racing. Um, and, and did sort of three qualifying races and, and a fast net race and just got absolutely addicted really quickly to the point where I, I did um, sell my house and sign up to do a round the world race. So basically, the, I, I'm not very good at doing man-made objects. You'll have, you'll have lots of hills, lots of, lots of animals. Um, and the only reason I can do, I can paint boats and I'm, I'm happy with that is, is because I spent a year on a boat. So, you know, literally just eat, sleep, sail the boat, racing crude um all of us kind of amateurs and and just sort of living together we had about three or four weeks training so it was the clipper around the world one where you have a professional skipper and then everybody else kind of trains and, and supports each other but for me i mean i've still got i've got about four thousand photos that i took during that you know we all sort of shared photos and i, I still paint from some of those but it it's the it's the memories in my head as well that because I was one of the people that was doing the sail changes at the front of the boat in you know and so in bad weather you're going down in size so that that's always when you have the epics at the front of the boat trying to get the big sail down not lose it overboard put up a smaller one so you, you're not going to be healed over and you know it's that so I think there's there's just an awful lot of emotion in there and that comes across it really does uh, yeah, and, and, and that's, thank you, that, that, that's what made me want to switch to oils and just, and just try oils. And I tried a knife rather than brushes. And I think I just found my medium of, you know, that's, that's what I've enjoyed. And I think if I can make people feel seasick or, or kind of capture the movement totally the do. way I do, then I'm like, I must be doing something right. So, and then I just keep kind of trying different things. Like, I mean, I do love mountains. That, that was my first love. So, um, I, I come back to those and hence sort of Lakeland, Scotland, um, New Zealand, there's a fair few of those. Um, and I'm, I'm just kind of developing and, and 
sort of change, you know, changing things slightly all the time. Little, little bit brighter colours creep in every now and again. Um, and also this this summer, because of lockdown, I, I have just been kind of running, well, I say just, aren't we lucky, running around the local moors, walk, you know, walking along the canal towpath, the riverbank. So I have been doing some more kind of local Calderdale scenes as, as well as the Scotland and the beaches and, and um, mountains. Have you lived by the coast, Fiona? Did you, have you lived by the coast? Is that one Never. of the things? No, I grew up in Derbyshire. Um, in fact, the next village to Ellen the so that there is history of people sort of living in the middle of the country and then going off and... So where, where do you say in Derbyshire? Um, it, well, it was Dronfield I grew up in, halfway between Sheffield and Chesterfield, and then right. I lived in Grindleford for about 10 years. So, um, yeah, that was the running club I never did, did join. There was, a, there was a famous running club around that area, and I just, I just ran around the hills myself. Um, but... So uh, yeah, I think it's just that has so a home is moorland and upland and, and that kind of slight friendly wildness, if you like, like, like we have around here. Um, I've only just grasped that. That that took a while for me. Yeah. Um, I used to I used to fear the moors and now I don't. And I, I have yet to learn to love the Lake District. The Lake District, hmm. it frightens me. And actually, I have no desire to paint it because all the things that I aim for, like trees and houses and landmarks, which are kind of comforting for me, you yeah. absolutely don't do that. That's the thing. And the thing about the seas is it's like you said about being on the ship for a year and all you've got to paint is the prow of the ship and the water. It's like you don't need anything to hold on to. But there's there's the light, there's the, you know, there's the sky, there's the clouds, yeah. the light, the water. People, I think until you've spent a fair bit of time at sea, people don't realise you've got a swell out of, in the ocean and then you've got a wave pattern on top of the swell and then depending on what the wind's doing, you might have ripples and ruffles and things on top of that. So oh, wow. there are kind of layers and I think about it the way I build up the paintings. I'm, I'm, I am painting it from a sailor's point of view, but it, you know, it, and it tends to be sailors that buy my, my big paintings, I think partly because of that, you know. Yes, um, but, I imagine but, if you weren't a sailor, they're not, they're not comfortable paintings. Yes, <laughs> yes, I've, I've, I've had that said, yes. Yeah. <laughs> sort of, you know, seasickness seems to crop up a fair bit as a, a word. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, sometimes I just enjoy setting myself a challenge as well. I think some of the, the series that I've enjoyed doing have been things like the, the glacial meltwater in, in New Zealand, which is a very particular colour, um, mm -hmm. and then the patterns of light and shade on that. So, you, you know, where you get woods either side of a, a stream, and it, it's just, as I say, it, it, having been there and, and felt the atmosphere in, in there, I, it's just, I, I enjoy trying to capture it on a painting and I, I couldn't explain why, I, I, you know, I, um, but I, it's something that I, I enjoy and, and people appreciate, I think. Yeah, oh, it's lovely. So have you got um, after, uh, what's the word, is it Wateo? When all this is over, <laughs> have, you got, yeah. um, have you got places you want to visit and paint? Ah, oh, well. There was a, a trip I had planned this year, which all got cancelled because of COVID. Um, I was going to go to the Arctic and sail from, so it was kind of a win-win for me because it was, it was sailing, but it was um, going from Tromso in Norway up to Svalbard and spending time around there, hopefully seeing things like polar bears and lots of seals and other wildlife and, and just getting, say, inspiration ideas, sketches, photos to come back and paint. And that was going to, that, well, that is going to be my next solo exhibition. Um, that trip got cancelled that that company it was it's kind of a couple of people that have their own yacht won't be doing it next year but there's a crewmate i've sailed with um, when i volunteered with ocean youth trust in scotland he and his wife who also happens to be an artist um are currently overwintering in in norway um and i'm going to join them as crew hopefully if if the uk will let me out and norway will let me in next april or may um, and do a very similar sort of trip and a slightly smaller boat, so it, it will be harder work. Um, but that's one of the reasons I've been doing printing classes as well, sort of printmaking, to, to just learn a different technique for a very kind of black and white environment or blue, you know, blue and white, something something different, I think. Again, like, like you were saying, rather than doing G-clay prints, something I've I've made. I'm, I'm yes. That. But yeah, so the big Arctic trip. Um, see how it goes, yeah. Oh, fantastic. No, I'm sure, I'm sure you will get to go. But um, back to Masters Domestic, Domestic, yes. you're at Hempton Bridge for Christmas. So yes. is that is that usual? And how do you make, uh, what, what are your kind of things that make a Hempton Bridge Christmas for you? It, it is 
usual actually quite often I, I usually have um, one or more of my stepdaughters joining us so I don't think we'll have that this year but um, yeah carrying strange things up the hill usually features I know I know there's one year where we bought a small reindeer instead of a Christmas tree and had to carry it up the hill so you know the the wee basket weave ones uh, so we've done that we right. carried a tree up when we just got one in Hebden um yeah, I think the carols around the tree is, is my favourite as well. That's that's one of the things that I couldn't quite believe it when I first moved here. And I think it's just lovely. Um, yeah. But yeah, oh, it will be a real shame if we can't do that this year. Mm. But the, yeah, the, the drunken rabble from the tables kind of joining in half a line later with the, the songs is, is always quite insane. That Dorothy joining. Dorothy. Quite a high point. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Dorothy. Well, Hi. I, I'm, I'm going to say ta for now. Um, so I, I shall uh, get off and leave you to it, uh, and I'll, I shall be um, back on the chain later on. And okay. See you all later. Yeah. Have, have a good Christmassy time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, nah, nah. Hi, Dorothy. Hello, Kate and Fiona. Hiya. My Hiya. I'm going to ask the questions now. So Dorothy, you do some amazing um, shop window reflection paintings. Could you tell us a little bit more about how you actually build those up and, and what gives you the inspiration for them? Well, um, they're, they're, it, it, it's quite a lengthy and complicated process in a, in a way, in that I suppose I spend a lot of time looking at <laughs> shop windows <laughs> and, and looking at the reflections, which is the thing that, that interests me most, that you get this flat screen in front of you, which you get the things behind, behind that and then everything reflected in it. And I just like the way that that, that muddles up and, the, and the, the fact that you get um, a sort of strange muddle of, of what's going on and what's going past. So, I mean, I, I do take a lot of photographs because you, because shop windows are, you know, you can catch them in an instant and the light will change and it'll go. So it's just a matter of taking, you know, taking quite a lot of photographs and then from those picking out um, what, what are, I want to paint really or you know sometimes it's almost complete in the photograph but there's always little things that I like to alter I quite like getting people in them although I've done I've started doing a few without any in because you know when it was Covid there was there was no tra and the, at, at first of all in March there was no traffic or anything so the, the streets were just completely bare which was really strange but you know from from that I'll do drawings or I'll do tiny little paintings I don't know whether you can see yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. so that's just a little sort of yeah. rough study and then the finished painting was actually I, I, I can only show you on a postcard because I've sold the painting <laughs> <laughs> so it you know that it's diff it's different from that it's more refined so you know I, I'll, I'll draw them out and I'll take spend quite a lot of time actually drawing them you know they take months and months because they're very detailed and you know what I'd like to develop them into is much more sort of abstract and free mm. you know paintings and uh, I, I love colour you know and patterns and yeah. all those things I always choose windows that have that kind of thing in so are there shop windows that you favour like certain displays kind of clothing oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's certain shops I will go for because of the way that they put their displays in the window. And that fascinates me. When I first started doing them, what attracted me was because I was in London at Camberwell School of Art, uh, was the mannequins. So I've got <laughs> it was the mannequins that I, I first was attracted to and the fact that you know they they stood there with their very long necks and beautiful bodies and it was such a ridiculous looking display mm. but you know the, the, there was patterns and things and the first painting I ever did was when a, a woman walked past in a in a fur coat <laughs> <laughs> and this was reflected in the window and I that's the first painting I did was this woman in this sort of fur coat 
going along the front of the, the picture. So I, I, I became obsessed with mannequins. I, I used to paint them all the time and, and paint, you know, draw them in shop windows because I come from North Wales. And uh, when I came back home, I could go to Chester and Chester has these rows of shops yeah. up on the, so I could sit and draw. It was re really good for that. Mm -hmm. um, but it sort of, I had quite a long break after having the children. I never stopped drawing, but I stopped doing big paintings like that and, and did some of India, which I went to, I went away abroad for quite a long time for six months and, and uh, traveled around and did a lot of paintings to do with just traveling really. And then came back and after having children, it was much, much more difficult. I was in a studio group in London called New Moon Studios. So um, yes, it was. Uh, it's been quite quite a long way. And and uh, you know the thing is with shop windows, there's so many of them, and they're so different. You can. It's like an endless source of uh, inspiration, really. Yes, there's definitely. Do you find yourself using the same paints, Dorothy, or, or no? No, I. I actually, I use all different times. I mainly at the moment I use watercolor, but frequently it's oils, acrylics, mixed media. I tend to do a lot of different different mediums, and that's the same with the other work I do. You know, when I'm, yeah, you know, I do a lot of walking in the mountains in Scotland and well anywhere really in Europe as well although not lately, <laughs> but uh, I mean, there's plenty of places to walk around here. Um, and I do, I fill sketchbooks of, of work, you know, just little sketchbooks. I've got thousands of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Can't see it very well, but um, and recently I was in Scotland, you know, sort of these type of. Oh, lovely. So they're very, they're very free because they're done very, very quickly. You know, when you're sort of going up the mountains, you can't really stop for ages. Mm. Um, so that's- Do you the go into paintings then at any point? Do you... Yeah, I do. It's just that I don't like many of them. So I'm, I never get round to, uh, you know, displaying them properly. I, I have got a few that I've got um, on postcards, like there's that one. It was up in the mouth, you probably mm. can't see it very well. And and the other interest I have is seed pods as well. I I draw and paint seed pods. I think it's through a sort of love of gardening and mm. and gardens that I've been visited and some very beautiful structures, aren't there? And well it it is the structures that fascinate me, you know, and all the different facets. And the, the, they're so different, mm. different seed pods for different things. So there's there's a lot of those that I do as well. So it's quite, it's quite varied and I tend to ping from one to the another. Um, you know, while, while we've been in lockdown, um, I started some, I did a lot of painting in the garden and uh, I started making quite abstract paintings of those, but I really don't know whether I, I like them. They've got all the colours in that I have in, in my, um, shop window ones mm -hmm. very similar colors and textures and patterns but i i don't know whether i like them or not <laughs> i haven't decided yet that's a very different style isn't it just the sitting outdoors and painting on plain air and yeah yeah which i really love doing actually i do i do enjoy doing that but, you know and that's what the sketchbook's about mm -hmm. it's, it's it's a i just think i'm sort of storing them up so that when i i am do Maybe if I ever get fed up of shut windows, I've got something to refer back to. <laughs> I can't quite ever leave it though. They're a bit of a, a bit of a drug. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, ever changing source of inspiration, aren't they? You're never gonna run out. Well, no, well, that's right. Because the, the window dressers change the shop windows all the time as well. Yeah. So it's, it's great. It's, uh, you know, different people go past in cars and 
yeah. all sorts of it, they the decorations at the moment then yeah. sorry yes yeah well I, I keep on meaning i have i did start a um a christmas one but i, I didn't finish it in time for christmas so <laughs> if i finish it maybe it'll be ready in time for next christmas mm. yeah <laughs> all right so talking of christmas said so what what do you enjoy most about Hebden Bridge and, and Christmas time here? I just think that the whole atmosphere um, in Hebden Bridge is so lovely most of the time. And it's really special at Christmas, mm -hmm. you know, singing around the Christmas tree. Not that we'll be doing that this year, but just just going there and being with a lot of people. It means that you always, you know, there's something special about doing that with everybody. So yeah. it's quite, yeah. it's quite Maybe good. Uh, the, the picture house as well, the, the show, it's a wonderful life every year, don't they? Like? Well, yes, that's right. There's sort of all these traditions <laughs> that, that it's, it's quite special about Hebden Bridge, I think, you know, so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been very good living here. I've been here for about 15 years now, so it's uh, quite well settled in. But we keep to be, seem to be talking about all the things that we're going to miss. That Hebden Bridge is brilliant, and it's we're not going to have this year like stuff at the mm. cinema. So I always take the kids to the ballet at the cinema. That's not going to happen this year. No, no, exactly. There's, <laughs> there's such a lot we'll be we'll be missing out on. Yeah. Hello, Kath. Okay. Hi, Kath. <laughs> it's been really nice hearing you all chatting. Oh. Let me just change my name. I don't know why it keeps changing. I've, my identity's been stolen. <laughs> That's all right. There we go. I'm me there again. We go. I don't have to pretend to be a bloke for the next next fifteen minutes. <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say goodbye now. I'll watch you elsewhere. Bye bye. Okay. okay. Bye. bye. Bye, Kate. So, Kath, you're a textile person. I am. <laughs> And uh, so you've been doing that for many years and I read that you, is that what you studied in Hull? No, no, I did a degree. I did a, I did a, a very Hebden Bridge degree in um, gender studies and philosophy. Um, oh. And actually I only came to textiles probably about five years ago. I mean, um, a decade ago, I couldn't work a sewing machine. I'm completely self-taught. Um, fantastic. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very into, um, I'm very into designing and creating beautiful things, but I certainly wouldn't wear a pair of trousers that I'd made. That's, I'm not, a, I'm not a technical seamstress. I'm, I'm a, I'm a creative, I'm a creative seamstress. <laughs> ah. So I've, I've been looking at some of the materials you use and I wonder what, why do you use those materials? Well, there's a story behind a story here. It's 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 um, it's quite an interesting thing. So um, so I have a good friend called Sue, who's one of the lead artists with the Handmade Parade, um, and we've known each other for nearly twenty years. Um, and she used to run a hat making business up at Old Town Mill, and. Um, she called me up there one day because there was a bit of a leaky roof situation going on and she had all these massive um, big bolts of beautiful fabric that she used to make these hats with. And um, so I was helping her sort the fabric out and some of it really caught my eye and it was, um, it was mainly like herringbone tweeds and there were some really vibrant colours. There was a really bright purple and then there was um, a lovely kind of herringbone overcheck in shades of, of brown. So... Um, I took some bits home to have a play with and started sketching. Now, I, haven't, I hadn't drawn since I was at school um, and I started drawing birds. Um, so that was what happened. I drew some birds and I cut some, um, made some templates out of the drawings that I'd done um, and made my first bird brooches. So I think the first two that I made were, I made a sparrow um, with the browns and I made um, a bullfinch with the purples. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was telling my mum about this because my mum, my mum's a very keen embroiderer um, and she was really interested. And she said, oh, do you know that that's um, that's what grandma's family used to make? And it turns out that I'm actually from a family of Yorkshire tweed manufacturers. So my um, my mum's mum 
um, grew up in Carverley, which is kind of, it's sort of halfway between Leeds and Bradford. Um, and her great, great uncles used to run um, Grimshaw Brothers Mill. So they used to make tweeds and whip cords and then they made um, khakis in the war. So I kind of just thought it was really interesting how I was drawn to using um, fabrics, um, sort of intuitively drawn to something that actually mm. was something that my family would have been making a hundred years ago. Um, so I'm, I do use a lot of Harris tweed in my work, but I also really want to fly the flag for Yorkshire tweeds because it's a really strange thing. I mean, Yorkshire is, is it, Bradford is where the wool board is. So um, mm. it's, it's, the, it's the center of the woolen industry, but people don't really know that Yorkshire tweed is a thing. They think of tweed and they think of Scotland. Mm. Um, so Harris tweed and things like that. Sorry. <laughs> so I've started making um, scarves this year. Um, I, I buy the scarves in and this is, um, this is one of my Robin designs. So the Robin's made of a mixture of Harris and Yorkshire tweed. Mm. Um, and the scarf itself is from Abraham Moon's Mill, which is in Guiseley, which is kind of really near Leeds Bradford mm. Airport. Um, but I love the fact it's still a traditional industry. I mean, um, Abraham Moon still use their Victorian vertical loom that they were using around the turn of the last century. Um, yeah. And the Harris tweed, um, so this orange here, this bright orange is Harris tweed, um, is, is still woven on, on um, like little pedal looms in people's garages in their back gardens. I mean, it's, so I, I like the fact that I feel like I'm an artisan that's also supporting other artisans in, in what I do. Um, I also, um, so I've got a range of, of lanterns, I'll just switch this on. So this little fox is Harris Tweed, but this is limited edition Balinese Batik. So it's cotton, but it's been um, hand block printed in Indonesia. Um, and I buy boutiques that come in limited print runs. So it's like I can make maybe a hundred lanterns and then that's it. Um, and then in the next season, I'll come up with a, I'll come up with a new design based around the, the new fabrics I can get hold of. But again, it's like it's supporting independent artists to make these beautiful fabrics. The only other thing I wanted to mention. So I also make key rings and I back them with leather, um, but it's vintage leather. Um, so my granddad used to run the tannery in Leeds back in the 1960s and 70s. And um, we were clearing out the garage at my parents' house and I find, found this massive mailing sack. And it was absolutely chock full of like postcard sized um, vintage leather pieces, which were all of his samples that he used to take around businesses when he worked in the tannery. Yeah. So, all of my key rings are backed with vintage leather that has sat in my parents' garage for 40 years waiting for a use. So, um, yeah, I just, just everything, I like to use things that are sustainable, ethical, support small makers um, and stuff that's, that's, um, that's been repurposed. Well, there's quite a lot of processes you, you've used in, in doing that. So what you know, what, what else is involved? There's an amazing amount of processes in, in making one small brooch. Um, so be behind me, this is the Blue Peter bit of, of um, today's art chain. So, so again, this is some Abraham Moon wool tweed. Um, and this is the beginning of a Robin Christmas decoration. So um, I cut all the pieces out. I've got a, a whole set of card templates that I've made. So I cut all the pieces out and then I have this this wonderful machine, which is, um, it's a needle felting mat. So this is a little needle felter and it's got five super sharp needles in, which have um, embedded themselves into my finger ends on more than one occasion. Um, so you pop that on there and then you just, it's literally just a process of um, stabbing the fabrics into place. Um, so they sort of embed themselves in there. So it embeds itself and then I put all of the details in in merino wool so that all gets needle felted in. I then free motion embroider it so if you I don't know if you can see in this puffing if you look close you can see it's all been stitched as well <clears throat> and then um, and then I finish them by hand stitching so all the little eyes um, this is hand stitched. Um, my my squirrels and my hairs got whiskers on. So all of those bits I sew on by hand. And 
the beautiful thing about that is, you know, and this is this is the joy of artisan, is that no two pieces that I do are entirely the same. And I always think it's kind of an interesting potpourri as to, well, what's what's the personality of the of the bird or the creature that you're getting? You know, are you going to get one that's a bit dopey, or are you going to get one that looks a bit cross, or are you going to get one that looks friendly? You know, I, I like that. I like the lottery of that. You know, and I think people form a connection with my birds and creatures because of that, because. There's often just one one that they have a story about and one with a particular personality that catches their eye. Yeah, so there might be a wonky whisker or or whatever that's that that people yeah, and are it's, expected and it's, to. We I mean we live very much in a culture, don't we, where everything's expected to be perfect. Mm. You know, I think about food in supermarkets and you know straight straight cucumbers and um, okay. you know uniform un, uniformity and actually there's a real beauty in things um, being imperfect, you know? Um, and so it's, it's often the sheep with the slightly, the slightly wonky look or, you know, the owl that looks a bit squiffy. That's the one that somebody picks out. Um, Cause I yeah. think there's something really, there's something really um, endearing about imperfection. Oh, that's great. So I know you, besides making all these wonderful Christmas things, you've been really, really busy organising the Maker's Market. So can you tell us a bit about that as I well? Can. I mean, I've been doing loads of online markets because, um, you know, obviously for a lot of us, um, our normal, our normal um, out there in the world craft markets that we rely upon at this time of year aren't happening. Um, so I've been trying to get a bit more savvy with um, social media. Um and I decided there's so many creative people in Hebden. I mean, we're 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 um we're a pretty phenomenal town when it comes to creatives, aren't we? And I thought, wouldn't it be great if um, we can have a virtual online market for Christmas? Um, so um, there's going to be nearly 60 people taking part. It's called Hebden Makes Christmas. Um, so it's a hashtag Hebden Makes Christmas, all lowercase, all one word. Um, it's going to be on Instagram tomorrow night, um, starts at seven o'clock. So at seven o'clock, if you hop onto Instagram, you search for Hebden Makes Christmas, the hashtag, and you look at the most recent posts in that feed, um, everybody's virtual market stalls that they'll be posting onto their own Instagram grids will appear magically um, in the Hebden Makes, Makes Christmas feed. And then you'll be able to interact with those artists. You'll be able to buy people's work. Um, you'll be, you might be redirected to somebody's Etsy shop. You might be able to buy directly from that artist. Um, and there's a real amazing range of stuff. I mean, we've got, I know both of you are taking part, aren't you? Um, and I'll have some of my stuff there. In fact, I think everybody who's taking part in the art chain is, is having yeah. a virtual oh, yeah. stall. Um, but we've got, we've got textiles, we've got fine art prints, we've got ceramics, we've got sculpture, we've got cards, we've got loads of really beautiful jewellery of all sorts of different types. Um, we've got calendars. Um, we've, yeah, there's, there's a really amazing range of stuff, um, some glass. Um, so yeah, it's really worth coming along. I think a lot of um, a lot of the artists and makers involved as, as well are either introducing new products that um, you won't have been able to see before. Um, and some people are doing um, special discounts or multiple purchase offers. So mm. it'd be a great way to do all your Christmas shopping locally um, from Hebden Bridge artists and get some stuff that's really special that you won't be able to get anywhere else. Yes, and I think that's one of the wonderful things I was saying that before about Hebden Bridge is the fact that it's so varied and there's so many different artists you know, particularly at this time of year. So what's what's good about Christmas in, in Hebden, the Hebden Bridge artistic community for you? Yeah. I think I think I think the word is community. I mean that's 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 the thing for me. I mean I've lived here for 20 years. Um and every so often I try and leave and I always fail and bounce back. And um it's it's because there's such an amazing matrix of people here. Um you know I I love I love Christmas in Hebden Bridge that I actually have a bit of time and space at that time of year to be able to actually see people. I like to sit and drink mulled wine with people. I like to eat mince pies with people. Um, I like to go and do the carol service in the square with my godchildren and um, shout carols really loudly. Um, so for me, it's, it's a time of really coming together and there being that bit of spaciousness after this kind of really busy period to... Um, 
to really enjoy just connecting with people and remembering we live in a, a really lovely place where a lot of our friends are within walking distance. I mean, what a gift. Yeah. And I also, just for you, Dorothy, I really like looking in all the shop windows at this time of year. <laughs> I've noticed that um, Helen, Helen Corney's been doing a fantastic um, 12 days of Christmas display in shop windows at the minute. So um, yeah, there's some really interesting, really, really vibrant shop windows to be enjoyed. Yeah, at there, is. It's, it's, there, there is, there is. It's absolutely fantastic when you get all the different decorations in as well. Yeah. In fact, I've got some some of my um, I've got a brand new set of Christmas decorations that will be revealed tomorrow night. But um, they, they're um, they're going on the true the tree Ooh. in Ruby Tuesday's window um, tomorrow. So um, oh, right. yeah, you can see some of them there. They they are shoe themed. That's all I'm going to say. The big reveal will be tomorrow. Cool. All right. <laughs> Hi, Rue. Hello, Rue. Hi. Hi. I'm, I'm going to bow for a bit. Been now. fantastic listening yeah. to you all. See you, Fiona. <laughs> Hi. Bye, Fiona. Hi, Fiona. How are you doing, Rue? It's nice to see you. Good. Great to hear the, your family history there and the connection to your work. That was I know. It was, it was really odd when I found out. I nearly fell off my chair. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm really <laughs> looking at those beautiful. My eye is always drawn to those rainbow penguin books. It's so glorious. I'm just, I'm just wondering, Rue, where, where, do you, where do you get your inspiration from? I mean, where, where, where do the books come from and how do you choose what you're going to put in your shelf portraits? Well, basically, I always have half an hour out, eye out, half an hour, half an eye out for um, an interesting collection of books wherever I am, whether it's in a bookshop or a historic house or around in somebody's home. Invite me around for a cup of tea and you'll soon notice my eyes wandering off to your bookshelves and I'll have my camera out saying, oh, can I just, uh, I do like to paint shelves that I've just come across and just connected with because they, they work visually. Um, or otherwise, um, I have some friendly secondhand bookshops that let me go and play on their shelves and rearrange the books. So. I can do themed paintings of, you know, all bird books or um, this one here was a bookshop in Wigtown in Scotland, which is mm. like the hay on why of mm. Scotland. And uh, I spent a happy hour in their back room arranging a, a Scotland themed painting. Uh, and the, and um, I often come home with a pile of books myself. I don't know if there's <clears throat> got a selection on the shelf here of actual books. Don't know if you can tell the difference. Um, but the, uh, I do have a very fast growing collection of vintage penguins, hence the uh, rainbow painting came from there. Uh, the more dog-eared, the better. I love all the rips and tears and, and uh, the character the books have from all the different people that have read them and passed them on. And, and you're quite the, feel... the master of doing all of the, um, the typeface as well. I just find it astonishing. <laughs> well, I did study typographic design uh, in a previous life, and the thing I loved about that was 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 the hand rendering of all the lettering in the in the roughs for our projects. Uh, so to come back round full circle to doing that again is is lovely. Uh, very meditative work. Uh, the paintings take a long time, so. Um, I usually have my headphones on listening to a play or some music and stop and have a bit of a dance around the studio, have a stretch. And then, uh, yeah, I love my work. <laughs> so, so the, I love I'm, my job. <laughs> I'm still looking at the rainbow. Funnily enough, it's like, I'd love you to paint my cookbooks because I have them all arranged in rainbow order. That's kind of how I think about. <laughs> oh, what, fabulous. Um, yeah. I do, I do. How, how long did that one take yeah. to paint? Oh, well, altogether about four months. Wow. Uh, not continuously, but because um, I build the paintings up in layers. So I'll do the background, um, maybe some wallpaper in the background, and then the spines of the books, and then another layer on the spines of the books, and then the text on top of that. So, and because it's oil paint, each layer has to dry first. So um, many hours spread over a few months. Uh, quite a commitment. <laughs> really wonderful. So presumably if it takes that long, you must work from photographs. Yes. 
Yes, I couldn't really camp out in uh, <laughs> a bookshop or in somebody's home for that long. It's like get, there's room in a sleeping bag in Waterstones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be fun. <laughs> so so if, I, if I did want to, say, have my prize collection of cookbooks painted, is that possible? Oh, absolutely. I love doing bespoke paintings. They're my favourite. Going around to people's houses and hearing the stories behind the, all the books they've chosen and, um, and then getting to build up a, their history on a, on a canvas is really fun and often leads me to reading other books and, and discovering other, other things. So are you, are you a pretty voracious reader as well? Yes, I, I didn't used to be. Well, when I was little, I used to, used to read a lot. I, I, um, I saw myself as a cross between Danny the Champion of the World and Laura Ingalls. <laughs> um, and I loved reading when I was young. And then I stopped sort of from age nine onwards uh, and got a bit lost reading wise. And it wasn't until I started painting books again uh, that I got back into reading and now yeah absolutely every painting I paint I, kind of leads me to a different book and, and yeah. Mm. And have you got any um, really memorable shelves that you've painted which which ones stick in your mind as, as the special ones? Oh oh now there's a question <laughs> well probably the rainbow one um, but we've already talked about that um, some special ones um, some ones I'm proud of are quite a lot of um, bespoke commissions come from publishers and um, two of the ones I'm very proud of. There are two authors out there, um, Kate Atkinson and Bill Bryson, who have my paintings on wow. their walls and have wow. said how much they like them. So I'm very proud of those ones. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I'm sort of my eyes trying to just scan in to see what what some of the titles are there. I think I could see one that says Scotland behind you. Oh, what there's, yes, that's the Scotland, the Scotland one. Um, this one actually is a personal favorite. How do I angle it? That's of a friend's bureau and their um, notebooks that they've written notes in over the years um, mm. that one day might be a book. So it's called Unwritten Book. And um, that's one of my favorite personal ones. And, and am I right in thinking that you've spent time in Hay on Wye? Uh, no. Oh, Do you right. know, I've never actually been to Hay on Wye. That should be a pilgrimage um, route. I know. It's on my list. It's on my list. I do have a, there is a, one of the bookshops, uh, Richard Booth's in Hay on Wye, sells my um, greetings cards. Uh, the greetings cards I produce, I sell um, wholesale through, um, just through, independent bookshops around the country uh, and also in my Etsy shop uh, on, for retail uh, and I've applied to have a stall at Hay on My Festival but um, I think I'll be waiting a very long time nobody ever stops doing their stall <laughs> uh, and obviously there isn't there hasn't been one this year they would be so foolish not to have you, though. What could be what could be more relevant to the festival? I than know, you? I know, but they have to wait for somebody to retire. I think for for um to be, for their, for a stall to come up. Maybe we all need to go down on mass and be very persuasive on your behalf. <laughs> yep, that, that's, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, what other products do uh, spin-offs from your book pictures? Uh, well, yes, because the paintings take so long to paint. Um, to to kind of get um, make my the not affordable for everybody, shall we say. Uh, so to, I do some, I don't know if I can do this without going off screen. <laughs> I can't see what I'm showing you, but hopefully I'm showing you some things. I do limited edition prints. There's one of the Bronte painting there that I did um, of the Bronte novels from the uh, Howarth Parsonage Library. And that's, so that's a full size, the same size as the original painting, but it's a limited edition G clay print. And I, I do those of all the paintings as one of the rainbow. And greetings cards, uh, which I mentioned that's going through shops and notebooks and sets of greetings cards is a new thing. If, are they on screen there? Mm -hmm. um, and little, little prints ready to pop in a frame. 
Oh, and oh, and mugs. Just for uh, open studio events and things, I did get a few mugs printed. That's sort of I, a special edition. I, oh, love I think I think they're fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe, might, might there be a few for sale tomorrow night? There might be a few for sale tomorrow night at Hebden, Hebden Makes Christmas. Hashtag Hebden Makes Christmas. Which, which is actually the hashtag a... that you, you introduced to us. That was your idea, wasn't it? Uh, yes, it was myself and another maker um, whose name I can't remember and I haven't met personally. Is that, uh, was, that Jane? With the idea. Jane, was that Jane from Jane and Moss? Oh, yes. Yes, that's the one. Yes. So the... the uh, yeah, positivity of, of Instagram and, and conversations happening between people who've never met and ideas coming out. It was great. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, tomorrow I'll be offering a, a free card with every order in my Etsy shop, my little special offer for the weekend. Wonderful. So, Rue, I can see you're surrounded by tinsel. It's looking very festive there. So what makes a, he what makes a Hebden Christmas for you? Well, I do like a bit of tinsel. And I just, I, I love, well, not just Christmas, but winter, looking, looking down from the tops into the valley and seeing the lights glowing and the darkness of the woods and the valleys around is beautiful. But on, particularly on Christmas, uh, one thing that stands out is, is standing right under the big tree in the square, looking up at the stars in the sky on Christmas Eve with a brass band playing right in our ears, uh, drinking warmed mulled things out of a flask and uh my children and i'm making up different words to the carols uh, standing right behind the vicar and trying not to laugh <laughs> it makes me feel so comforted that there's somebody else in the carol service behaving a bit badly with children oh yes we like to behave ba a little bit badly. <laughs> respectably badly of course yes. <laughs> i think it's an essential of, of christmas around the christmas tree in the square yeah. a little bit cheeky yeah, it's cheeky. <laughs> Hello, Julia. Hi. Hi, Julia. I'm, I'm going to go you. off. <laughs> it's been really nice to hear everyone's uh, stories about their work. Fantastic. Right. Yeah, well, this is such a great idea. Yeah, it's good, isn't it's it? So fun. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm going to leave you, and I'll be back later. So see you okay. later. Hi, Lovely to see you, Dorothy. Yeah. Oh, I said Rue and Dorothy. Getting confused. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Julia. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, yeah. What a year it's been. A very different year for yeah. lots of people. Um, is there is there any um, is there any particular things you've worked on this year that have that have been significant? Yeah, I think. Uh, well, I did a painting for a TV program uh, which I'd filmed oh, yeah. actually the year before, but it came out in September this year. Um, called Home is Where the Art Is and um, it's just an art competition on BBC it's still on iPlayer if you want to see it but um, so the brief of that even though it was way before everything that happened was quite an emotional one about um, sort of uh, losing family members and sort of being sort of cared for and I was trying to produce a piece of work that was sort of comforting and um you know gave that sort of vibe that if you looked at it you'd feel a bit better so it seems so apt for this year and it all came out this year the program so I'll show you what I did uh wow well, that's amazing <laughs> yeah it's weird isn't it so the yeah. couple um that had uh had commissioned it um they'd lost both their fathers and a stepfather so I'd just done um, emperor penguins are the best fathers in nature so I thought that would be really nice and they loved oh, animals. Oh what a lovely had, idea. Yeah they had loads of animals in their house but talking about this year I wanted it to be sort of really warming comforting colours and have a kind of flow of you know sort of new beginnings and changes and that kind of thing so actually even though I did it for that program it's it sold really well as a print and as a card and all sorts of things because I think sometimes it's perfect for this year isn't it yeah, yeah. we need like a, a hug in a in a, in a yeah picture, don't we? i love and it uh, the um softness in the background really makes gives it a warmth and a, a comfort oh, how, how do you get you. how do you get it so soft in the no, yeah um picture? i'm different to you i work in acrylics so um they dry very quickly so rather than working through the paint like you would wouldn't you with a, a something that mm. stays wet for a long time 
I just do lots of layers. So I let them dry um, and then just layer up and layer up and then just keep sort of trying to get the two colors to meet. Um, so yeah, it's just layering basically that gets it really soft. So, yeah. so do you fluff it about? Yeah, it's a lot of, <laughs> um, oh, I, sometimes, I learned to hold, hold my pen like this at school. Um, and now, well, obviously I was made to learn like that. So I do a bit of both, but that's that's a good, <laughs> a good action for, for <laughs> blending, I think. Yeah, yeah. so I do that. Oh. Yeah, and you do lots of local landscapes. I do. Yeah, there's one in the background there of uh, mm. Smallland. So talking about branches, actually, that was um, a Howarth influenced uh, picture. Right. Yeah. Of the past. You've really week. got the the moods of the moodiness up on the moors. With, with yeah, the, uh, I love all that. And I usually, in normal years, I do workshops at the parsonage, like maybe like six or seven times a year. Oh, okay dip in uh, doing craft workshops because I teach as well from my studio so yeah it feels like a place that's really in my heart so um yeah I like I'll show you closer actually yeah that'd be good yeah what I like to do in my paintings is like you said have that nice softness with the blending but also have like mm. quite a lot of space for it to breathe and I feel like I want my paintings to be quite relaxing and calming to look at. So I feel like if they have a little bit of space in them, that that helps that. <laughs> the light is stunning in that. It makes me feel like I'm, I'm up there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah it's got that heavy That's kind where of I love oven. to be. <laughs> yeah. Because when I'm up in my studio, I just like to just wander across the moor. Oh, this, I just love them. Yeah. I think, um, where are you from, Rue? Are you from this area? Or? No, I'm from down south. Yeah. I'm from London. Yeah. yeah I I weirdly find all the hills and the moors really comforting and the big skies because I'm from this area and it feels I don't know, it feels like you're sort of surrounded in this because sometimes they're quite uh grey and foggy. I quite like that kind of thing. I just <laughs> love the really space. Yeah, yeah, space. Yeah. The space and the sky and the and the solitude perhaps yeah yeah room to breathe isn't it and I think mm. we've, uh, I, I think everyone's sort of explored nature a lot more this year because that's one of the things we could do wasn't it especially in sort of deepest lockdown so I think yes having that we're so lucky in this area that we can just go and and not see anyone and have that yeah just taking all that nature I think it's great yeah, I had so many plans of, of sensible things to do over lockdown with my business but I just spent most of it walking yeah and why not because it's really good for your soul isn't it I've been trying to go Absolutely. out really regular because you just need it don't you I think yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. what do you do do you head out onto the tops with a camera or do you take a sketch pad out how, how do you get your inspiration yeah I do like to sketch um uh, I did illustration at uni, so it was really uh, focused on drawing and sketchbooks. So I always had one in my pocket. So actually, I quite like to have one in my pocket if I'm waiting for trains or anything like that, you know, just to spend <laughs> a bit of time, use the time up. But um, I take pictures as well on walks, um, if anything catches my eye. Generally, it's if I see a good sky, <laughs> I need that in my paintings, because um, that's really what I'm inspired by I think like it's what I spend most time on in my pictures um, and like you say we were like that sort of softness and blending is really my thing and sort of trying to get a little bit of light coming through so it's not all great it's got like a little bit of hope in mm. it yeah <laughs> um, yeah and I also good actually hope. yeah good to have hope I also uh, different to my paintings I make screen printed things which I make because again because I did illustration probably and I just love drawing so I do a lot of pen drawings and then I screen print things so I make like this is good for Christmas like little uh, decorations and things um, so I do like limited edition prints and oh, bags, but he's the most popular at the moment so I thought I'd show him. Am I right that there's yeah. quite a few that feature your cat as well? Your cat yeah. be a bit of a celebrity. Yeah, I was going to say second popular, but don't tell him, uh, is my cat Billy. <laughs> so he's a he's a Persian cat that, um, yeah, he's got a very big ego, so rightly so, he, he <laughs> dons 
<laughs> lots of people's walls and he's on cushions in people's houses so yeah he's he's made oh he's also in um a book of cat which was like um a publication and they had artists versions of cats and they'd seen my biro drawing of him and it's gone in so oh, that was really oh, nice brilliant yeah and so will they be they will they be on show tomorrow night at the makers market yes so i'll have all my screen printed stuff because they're really good for gifts they're like i might have a donkey on my tree yeah uh, do like uh, little notebooks and all sorts of things but then i've got um prints of my paintings and cards as well so lots of stuff yeah mm. <laughs> looking forward Excellent. exciting yeah and what are you good. doing for christmas oh well what i mean makes your christmas in hebden yeah hebden christmas for me usually is um the egg factory eczema so the egg factory oh, is yeah. a really nice yeah community based co-working space but they also have screen printed screen printing facilities so that's why I go there um, but every Christmas they have Xmas which is a Christmas fair and just have they have like live music like a DJ and just it, you see all the people you know from Hebden um, and it's just really lovely and it's always the last fair I do of the year and it's the easiest because it's like five minutes from my house <laughs> so it just yeah it seems to make it I don't know it just finishes off the year but having said that I think having what we're doing today and the fair tomorrow that just shows how strong the community is in Hebden and mm. you know we what we'll, we just adapt and and do what we can whatever the situation so yeah I think that's a nice thing to remember you know we can always make something of it yeah yeah <laughs> it's, it's, yeah I love I love the egg, the Eggsmas market. I've never done a stall there, but I very much like eating homemade cake and drinking mulled oh. wine. Yeah, great cake. It's, no, it's guilt free because I can just stumble home as well. It's lovely. Brilliant. Yeah, they've got good Hi, food, music, Hello. loads of artists. Zace. Yeah. Yeah, but they're okay, I'm, I'm... Again, so that's good. Hi, Hannah. <laughs> Hello, Hannah. It's lovely Hello, to see Hannah. you. I'm going to I'm going to toddle off and leave you to it. Lovely chatting to you. Oh, nice Bye. Bye. Hi. Hello, love. Oh, hi, lovely. Very so, nice to see you over there on the big screen having a nice chat. Yeah. So, <laughs> your, your studio is looking so warm and cozy and crispy. Nice and crinkly. I was upset because I had to have the fluorescent light on, otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see me, but I did manage to make it twinkly. So, oh, it I'm still so looks happy. very warm. Mine's <laughs> stark white. It's lovely and warm. It so, is. It's a very it, lovely studio. It is lovely, and we're so close. So Hannah's literally just down the corridor from me. So we're Julia shouted, "I could hear her right now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Anyway, um, but what Rue was saying actually um, uh, about your lovely glowing lamps, because it has been—we've touched on it, haven't we? It's been quite a strange year. Um, have and we've talked a little bit about nature as well. So your nature based and and light based so have you noticed anyone uh having an extra appreciation for these things like a glowing light or or nature based thing yeah it's it's a thread that is running through every day at the moment i think um when the clocks change um things change for me business wise suddenly people start to buy lights and i think because it's that time of year anyway and it gets the nights draw in and we want to be cosy and we live in a very deep dark valley and we want to stay as as, as cosy as we can <clears throat> um so there's been that going on but then of course we went into lockdown so that's like double need to be cosy and glowy and and, and comforted and the lamps have kind of got the same sort of feeling as as um like a, a crackling fire or you know it just makes you feel I keep saying the word cozy cozy <laughs> well, it, it always looks so cozy if i'm like go and get a cup of tea or something it just glows from hannah's studio <laughs> so there has been um a big um i've, I've made a lot of lights these last um eight weeks october and november have been really busy in here um, but it's also reflected in the gift notes that I'm writing for people. So I have an option on the website where I can send, 
I've been encouraging it this year just because the postal service is going to be just rammed, is rammed at the moment. And so I've been encouraging people to order and let me write their gift notes and send the presents direct to the um, friends or family. And the gift notes are all about kind of light at a dark time, um, something to keep you cosy in the dark winter months, you know. It's lovely. I love writing gift notes to people. It's nice, and it's like being a little elf and you sort of <laughs> I've done a few. It's really nice. Yeah. I like yeah. it. So I've been doing a lot of that and um back onto the the nature theme and the kind of appreciation. It's like a, a double whammy. We want the cozy, but we've also it seems that lots of people have fallen in love with nature this year. I and mean, you were touching on that in what you were saying earlier that we all have had so much more time, not all of us, but a lot of us have had more time to be wandering and walking and rediscovering paths and and getting to know our neighbourhood more. And there's this one um, particular customer who I sent some of my tiny treasures wallpaper to. I didn't just send it to her, she ordered it. <laughs> so <I> wasn't just <laughs> <terribly random. laughs> So um, <laughs> this is the, one of the colourways in the Tiny Treasures. It was a design I did last year, I think. Um, but it features loads of the little tiny special things that you might pick up while you're out walking in the woods and or find in your pocket like a month later when you put that coat on again. And, um, I'll keep that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, they, they kind of end up in strange places. We seem to have... I have at home um, a printer's tray, which is an ideal place for keeping your tiny treasures. But I've got it up next to my sofa and Willow, my cat, has removed every <laughs> single treasure from my treasure shelf. She stands oh. right on her hind legs, right to get to the top of the treasure shelf, and she's batted them all off. Wow. So my special ones I have um, rescued but we keep finding them she bats them around the house and we found a few under the fridge lately so <laughs> yeah she doesn't <laughs> respect no respect for the treasure <laughs> anyway <laughs> I sent I you. Um, <laughs> yeah we I sent um three rolls to this customer and they ordered one of the tiny treasures books as well so I had um it was my friend Susie's idea once in the studio I was forever telling her the story of this treasure and that treasure that was on the wallpaper and she was like you should write a book you should put them um, all in a book and tell the stories of them and I could see this book immediately in my head it was a bit I wanted it to be the same size as an, a little observer's book the rule know what I'm talking about I was say oh, it's yes. couldn't, find, couldn't find anyone to self-publish it it's quite small enough so it's just a little bit bigger which is a shame but it's a dinky little thing with a little shiny um, sycamore seed in and uh, it's got like um, just all the different treasures that feature on the wallpaper. So if you're, you know, lying in bed looking up at your wallpaper, you can know what they all are and learn to spot your treasures when you're out in the woods. So they bought a book as well, which is like my ideal customer because that's what I wrote the book for, um, to, so that people could identify their wallpaper treasures. But when the book came out, people were buying it just on its own I never actually considered that that might happen so that was really lovely but this customer bought the wallpaper and bought the treasure book which was delightful to me and then um, just last week she wrote um, an email and I'm just going to read it it's only short but this kind of sums it up she said the tiny treasure design sums up the time we've spent in lockdown we've taken so much pleasure in finding comfort and solace in our local environment who knew we had a family of foxes just five minutes away We've been mesmerized by the changing tree foliage and a variety of plants. Now we are moving into the depths of winter. Your wallpaper will remind us of what's to come next year. Thank you. Lovely. That's, oh, that's like, lovely. That's like a dream email for me. That's the whole <laughs> thing put together. That's who I made the wallpaper for. They saw it, they bought it, they love it, and they're gonna cherish it and enjoy it. So yeah. I, well, I always I always think about your work it's like you're when you go for a walk you're kind of immersed in nature aren't you the sights the sounds the smells and everything aren't you in fact I went for a walk with your daughter and we went uh, to like a 
Oh, like a, I won't say a lake, but like Real a big pond. pond. Yeah, yes, that you look, um, and that's you've just completely surrounded by it because of all the running water and you're climbing over tree stumps and things. But I think your work is it feels like that, doesn't it? Like because you get all the little details, but you you get that's the nice. whole picture as well. I think it's yeah, it's, it's like you you look up and take pictures of skies. I rarely do that. I'm like on the ground oh, taking cool. pictures of like <laughs> tiny leaves and. Yeah, it's funny. Well, you... Nice things, aren't they? Because oh, sorry, gone room. I was going to say, you start. Have you started making li actual little tiny treasures? Oh, yes, those as well. Another opportunity. Oh, nice. Brilliant. So they're so sweet. These, I don't know if you can see. Oh, gorgeous! I got my own laser cutter recently in the last um, couple of years, and um. So the first thing that I did when the laser cutter arrived was like, I want to just play. What can I cut out? What can I cut out? And I'd just done the Tiny Treasures wallpaper. So all the motifs were ready and waiting to be mm. turned into something else. So we started cutting the treasures out from the laser cutter just out of paper at first. And then what are we going to do with these? They were so sort of tactile and lovely. And we started finding them um, some thicker paper and some different colours and they ended up just being just a simple thing that we can um, hang up or just so like pretty. my mum just has some sitting on a shelf and and then it's kind of turned into I don't know if you can see these ones yeah, it's like the winter treasures as well oh, yeah. like little fur um, and berries and things so yeah Will I we gave... have those in the in the uh, head to make us Christmas tomorrow yes definitely yeah, they will be featuring. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. I've got very low stocks. It's a shame. <gasps> oh, <laughs> get in while you can. Get, get the laser cutter whirring tomorrow in readiness. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, talking about Christmas, uh, that leaves us on. What's your favourite thing to do uh, for a Hebden Christmas usually? Well, we are, um, I rarely am, am here on Christmas Day, and this year we are going to be, and that is quite nice actually to just stay at home be cozy but what's lovely about living here is um our incredible shops and it's possible to do all your christmas shopping without having to get on a train or a bus or go anywhere which is good right now <laughs> it's good anyway isn't it anyway, yeah. but especially so thank year. goodness the shops are open again because like it wouldn't feel complete without just like um queuing up in Oxfam to buy wrapping paper <laughs> no uh, yeah I think that's um what's special hello Toby hi Toby hello. hi Toby hi how you doing good hi yeah. mm. yeah, lovely to hear you all chatting it's yeah. nice it's it sounds um, great it's nice it's to see everybody on screen together yeah. just want it to keep going to have all the 50, 60 artists that are in the chain will just keep on chatting. Yeah, they did. Massive great, chains. wouldn't it? <laughs> Break some records. Yeah. Speaking of chain, yeah. I'm going to. Oh, lovely. Link. Cheers, Rue. Nice to see you, Rue. Bye. Bye. When I work out how to leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the logistics uh -huh. are tricky, aren't they? I know. Hi, Toby. Toby. Hi. I was. Um, when we had our um, dress rehearsal the other night, I was um, saying how much I like all the drawers and things in the background. And I'm just wondering what mm. you keep in all of those drawers and how you know where everything is. Which drawer <laughs> do you want to know about? I'll tell <laughs> you what. Thick ones. I, like, I really like those wooden ones, actually. Oh, very very drawn to the wooden Which... one. No, 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 to the other oh, side. On the other side of you. <laughs> I know which one you mean, on the desk. <laughs> they've all got um yeah this is my silver bullion that's what i keep on the silver so i've got wire in there and cheap silver um bits that are kind of half made there and um and tube in that one nice so like half made creatures that's amazing yeah yeah there's like little boxes of sort of experiments and things so sometimes okay. if i'm a bit stuck then i'll just get those out and They'll spark something again, you know, just nice. like an individual piece. Nice. So, so you um, you make lots of creatures for people who don't know your work. Um, you make creatures out of silver. 
jewelry, jewelry that's yeah. that are very much well what can you describe to us what an arthropod is there's a lot of arthropods what is there's the definition of what yeah. is the definition of one? We need to know. I don't know what one. <laughs> oh, it, mean, it means jointed foot. So it's essentially, it's all the invertebrates. Like basically all the invertebrates. So it's all of the, um, yeah, normally got, you know, six legs, uh, joint, jointed skeletons. Um, so it's all the kind of beetles. It's all insect. Right. Um, millipedes, you know. So it's all the sort of creepy crawlies, you know. But I just love the segmented sections and... Um, you know, the way all that just all perfect evolution has created all these perfect forms. So what what drew you to making insect jewellery? Well, um, I, I grew up on a farm in West Wales, so I think it's um, it's that kind of uh, it's just like a childhood, basically playing outside of the fields and exploring and, you know, looking under logs and stones, you know, and just yeah, looking under stones, just being out in nature. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And you sort of get to learn all the names and everything and our farm was quite close to the the sea as well so it's kind of like rock pool so then you've got the the, the shoreline arthropods as well you know so and right. i guess it's kind of like yeah but my i know about your your treasures uh, hannah i think i've got sort of similar treasures but they're kind of all like sea shore related you know so yeah bits of crab and crustacean so <laughs> i've got a lot of those in my workshop as well oh very nice so um what processes, how do you go about creating your pieces? I use, um, I'm, I mainly use uh, silver and gold. So it's essentially quite traditional silversmithing techniques. So um, there's a lot of hammer work. Uh, there's a lot of kind of like forging over steel stakes um, using hammers. So I think that's my favorite tool, just like just sort of direct manipulation of metal, you know, forging. So I've got a lot of hammers, probably about over 20, all different sort of shaped heads and made out of different materials and things. You know. So that's kind of really like the good stuff. That's how I forge my forms, and then um, and then kind of uh, put them all together. Um, again, quite traditional sort of techniques: of soldering, um, you know, and filing and fusing. And, um, and where did you learn to do it? Um, I learned at, well. I studied at um, Staffs University. I did a three D design course so um covering all sorts of of medium you know sort of glass blowing to ceramics to, to fine metal works um so yeah kind of that's where it sort of started and, and for my final degree show I, I made six like one-off um pieces which are basically that's the kind of work that um you know i love doing now that has kept me going um but but a lot of this one is you know you don't get taught a lot of the processes at, at uni you know it's kind of especially when it's like mixed media like that, it's more, um, you know, learning lots of different um, techniques and disciplines, really. So a lot of it's self-taught as well. You know, there's no there's no better experience for learning to make than just making, you know, and just got to put the hours in um, to, to find how things work and find out things you want to make, you know, and that's the only way to learn. Yeah, it's funny that about yeah. art college, I didn't learn many techniques. Yeah. I didn't do any painting much at all because I did illustration so I did drawing and things but um yeah so it's after sometimes it's just yeah, yeah. it's all the years isn't it after <laughs> yeah yeah, oh. yeah you've got to put the hours in well, some so, of your pieces literally take hours and hours and hours don't they yeah <laughs> big pieces yeah they take uh yeah I mean I, I think I count I counted one of the last big ones about 120 hours um and that's obviously spread out over months, you know, because it's kind of the, mm -hmm. some of the big pieces. Um, so this, this is quite a big piece. Um, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't all, it's not just all there, you know, um, in my head, you know, I have to kind of like work through processes and work out how it's going to fit around the body and things like that. So this is all jointed and articulated. Amazing. Um, and again, so it hangs around the body. That's kind of really important, obviously, that, that connection to the body and how it fits. Mm -hmm. so there's um pieces at the back and it opens out uh, yeah i would think when i see yours on your photographs of clients and things they always sit so beautifully and i think the the, the women that wear them always look so confident and strong and i think it's because you know it's got that good fit and it's a bold piece of jewelry mm -hmm. and that's like a really lovely thing isn't it to have something to wear that makes you feel 
yeah, yeah. stronger and <laughs> like that. Yeah, I, th I think that's I think it's really that's what I've really learned in the past few years that they can have that real connection you know the things that you wear and I really want to kind of like that's you know I really want make pe to people to feel good you know wearing things that I make you know yeah um, and the big pieces I think the women that they're buying they're often confident anyway I think you know and um yeah then they really need to love it as well to be able to yeah to, yeah. To yeah they're a good them. statement aren't they but yeah, yeah they look amazing yeah what is your um, favourite piece to make? Um, I d yeah, I like, it's funny because I, I like, you know, I like making everything, you know, so I like the kind of smaller things and trying to make things accessible to people. Um, but, but really kind of, it's, it's the bigger things that I really love making, um, ones that are kind of just sort of pushing, things that like haven't possibly been made before, you know, and I've got some sort of, you know, I've always got loads of ideas for sort of bigger things in my head and they're just kind of pushing my skills as well because I really want to you know in the time that I've got with sort of the ha my hands working while they're still working and you know just really just produce sort of the best work I can do really so that's yeah large scale um trying to make unique objects you know as best as I can that's, that's another that's a bracelet with a, it's got a spring inside again it doesn't really show very well but it's seg seg segmented Everything, yeah, is forged. That's all hand forged from um, sheet silver. Gosh, so that's loads of work, isn't it? If it's yeah. all sectioned, it's amazing. Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, that's done. So, is your studio at Northlight now? Yeah, yeah, it's great. Love it. I moved the same week as, as lockdown happened. Uh, I was moving all my stuff in, you know, it's just like, oh my god, this is not the good time to work from home. <laughs> <laughs> but then it ended up being just my, my you know, my sanctuary, my, my safe space. Or so I would say, you know, luckily we were still able to, to come in here, you know, it was kind of um reduced numbers and we had to kind of you know, sign in, you know, say that we're here. But um I, I love it here and I love because I've always worked from home. So to be in a sort of studio and um Yeah, it's a different Bible together. Artists. Yeah, it's lovely, really nice. It's nice having other people about. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what makes a Hebden Christmas for you and your family? Well, we've always loved, and a lot of people mentioned it, but the car carols, you know, under the tree. Um, which, yes, won't be happening this year, probably not. Um, although, yep. you know, my kids can see half the stuff because you know, because there's always so many people there, you know. But it's just that. Even sort of going down there, and I think the council people put on like mince pies, don't they, and mulled, mulled wine as well. Yeah, and all the pubs are open, yeah. so yeah, yeah, other things as well. The tree looks really good this year, it's really it looks great, it's really nice shape, actually. Yeah, and then yeah, just the lights look a bit better as well. Hi, John. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> hi, John. I think, I think I've just come back on as Hebden Bridge Open Studios. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just the whole thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to try and edit that now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say bye because John's joined. Uh, Hi, Julia. Lovely chatting to you. See you, you soon. Bye. bye. Oh, this has been absolutely wonderful, hasn't it? It uh, worked. Great. It yeah. worked. Your idea worked. <laughs> well, yeah. it's, it's an idea that has been done before. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think I've seen it as a group of artists doing this sort of thing. Mm. Uh, I, I'm a, a radio bud, uh, and Radio 4 has a programme. You, you've heard it, yeah? The Chain Reaction programme. Hmm. Oh, it's really good. They get um, absolutely fascinating people on. Uh, the, 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 interviewer, the interviewee becomes next week's interviewer. Uh, okay. Shall you yeah. see where this is coming from? Yeah, is, that, is, that the, is that the artist? That's the, is that the artist? Um, specifically that you're talking about because they did a series on that as well where an artist interviewed oh, right. an artist. No, no, I don't know about that. All right, so yeah, that was similar, oh. um, but it was all, all artist space. That's that's really interesting actually. Yeah, yeah, I, I can imagine. Yeah, I, I can honestly claim that I didn't uh, nick the idea oh, from no. that that's already yeah. been done. Then <laughs> <laughs> I've adapted. <laughs> so, John, how's your year been? I mean, it's obviously been really strange for for everyone, but um, what have you kind of 
you know, what are you pulling out from it as positives that you can take forward? No, yeah, I think it, it has been very strange. It's been very difficult. And because uh, I was just listening, because um, I was watching it on Facebook when, when you were chatting earlier, and it's, it is really quite different for me because um, I'm just in my workshop on my own. Um, and I don't, I don't know how it would work. Um, sharing studio space, I think it'd be really nice, but I imagine it must be quite sort of distracting. Um, I, I do like the fact that I can just get on and, and be on my own down there doing stuff. Uh, but it, it, that, that is something that I've really missed though, because for me, I do quite a lot of events normally. Uh, and I'd be out and about um, meeting all the other makers at, at the events, but all, all the people as well. Uh, and I really like that. It's, it's you, you get a lot of feedback about your work uh, mm. and it's it's nice to sort of put it in front of people and, and you know, see what kind of response you get. Uh, but posit positives that I've pulled out of this year. Um, I, it's given me a lot of time. Uh, to just sort of think the the thing about doing lots of events is you, you end up having to make work for events. And it's kind of like, you've got this deadline looming of like, Oh no, no, I'm doing this really. And you know, some of these events are quite expensive as well. So you need to be sort of making a lot of work and you, a lot of people are going to come through it. And uh, I, I don't know. I, that's, that's been a good thing to sort of take that sort of pressure off and be able to just think, well, what do I want to be doing? Are, are there other, things that I want to make or other approaches that I want to sort of have a look at. Uh, I, I think I'm, I, I want to sort of focus a lot more uh, on making to order um, rather than making for a deadline of an event. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's going to change for me uh, quite a lot. I've got some ideas for next year of how I'll go about that. Um, so. mm, good. Yeah, yeah. Because you slip back into the same, you know, applying to the same shows again, isn't it? You know, whether because you're, you're, yeah, you know, building your your business up in a different way requires you to make those early decisions, doesn't you, it? You get it, you get into this sort of pattern and routine, and you just, yeah. you know, it's like certain weekends of the year are sort of like it's spring whisley time, and uh, you know, it's my first, that's my usually my first big event of the year, I sort of, yeah. And it's there's all these like landmarks through the year, and I don't, I think it's good as an artist to have things sort of shaken up a little bit, because you you can get into a pattern where you just sort of do this thing that you do, and you always do that. Hmm. So you know, having having had it taken away, um, yeah, that's, that set me off thinking thinking about work in a different way. I I, yeah. I want to be I want to be able to find more time to to sculpt. Uh, and play uh, that's mm. I think that's something that I find very difficult to sort of create myself enough time to just go right there's no pressure uh, and I can just make anything that I want to do and I'm just going to sort of play around with some ideas um, we all have to be quite strict with ourselves in creating that time to play mm. when we yeah. make and we've got demands and we've got orders and responsibilities you still it's hard it's the hardest it's the most important thing but it's one of the yeah. hardest things to craft that into your day or your week on a regular basis yeah well do you think of it like that that you do you deliberately on a weekly sort of basis I, think right I, right on tuesday at half past 12 it's my play time <laughs> in, in theory i used to i have over the you know, my sort of routine waves in and out of um, of all sorts of different ways of trying things. But there's certain days I'm in the studio with like Dominique now works on a Wednesday and Thursday for me. So that's very much making day. And we're just all hands on deck, making, making, making. Yeah. But those other three days, I could decide that, you know, on, on Tuesdays, I'm going to just play. But then I can't really do it all day. It's kind of short, sharp burst the sort of better. So a little bit of time in the morning to just dabble with some ideas and yeah. then get on with, you know, when I've got orders in my inbox, I feel itchy to do them, you know, that kind of because I've got to get them done. But everybody who kind of buys work from me knows that they, they want me to do new things and they want me to design new stuff for the future. So I'm sure they won't mind waiting a little while <laughs> if you know if well, one, of my ideas for, one of my ideas for next year is um 
I, I want to put um, I'm going to put four points in the air, sort of like three months apart. That I, I basically I want to take all my orders uh, or, or the bulk of my orders will be for they, they will be made for that that delivery window. That's good. Uh, and I'm I'm going to see how I can structure things so that, so that, so that I don't have this sort of orders. I obviously I'm going to if somebody wants to buy something I'm not going to say oh no you can't have it until next March. Uh, yeah. But I, I want to try and work out ways that I can uh, in, encourage people to order in that way. Mm -hmm. I, I have. Yeah. I admire people who kind of just work and work and work and then put everything online and sell it just like that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's quite stressful being a customer in that circumstance i've tried to buy things from people who work in that mm. way and quite like ah we're gonna, gonna get it now but it'd be quite but nice it, wouldn't it just to be able to sort of shut yourself off for that you know yeah. three months yeah make, just making that type head down with no kind of like yeah people telling you what to make you know you can sort of make what you want and then say right in this date I, I, I don't envisage having three months in this way. <laughs> I I think I'd be very lucky if I get a month of playtime if I can oh, yeah, make I this work. There's there's so many different processes with bronze. I'm a very slow sculptor as well. Um, I I because it's it's precise and it's fiddly, uh, and I'm really quite into getting things sort of accurate and so. I, I, I'm not one of these sculptors that just slap it on and you get the sort of feeling of an animal and it's, sort of, you know, you, you can tell what's coming out of the clay. No, it's, it's, it's precision. I, uh, with you talking about anthropods earlier, Toby, I, I thought I'd bring one of my little beasties to come and say hello. <laughs> Look at that. He's amazing. He's <laughs> light on that. Shiny. Uh, it's, it's my, my granulated, gro granulated ground beetle. Yeah, it's a bronze. Yeah, and it's uh, even the underside of it. I don't know if that's coming across well. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, you can really yeah, see yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Um, I've I've only sold them to people that really know what's happening with these beetles, because mm. they they are very precise. Because you know, doing it so oversized, you can get that kind of precision. Yeah, mm. I like things like that. Yeah, I can tell it's a ground beetle. Yeah. <laughs> You get lovely violet ones, don't you? Oh, um, so well, I, I didn't know what it was. We were walking in Ireland uh, with some friends uh, and one walked across the path and I'd not seen that particular species before. I I think they're common in, in particular places. I don't think they're a rare beetle, but, but they're common in particular places and I've not happened to be in those places where, they, where they're a common species. Uh, so this little beetle walked across. I got some photos on my phone uh, and then looked it up once I got home um and yeah that is brilliant but it just set me off because the, 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 all the different ground beetles are oh, fantastic they're absolutely crying out to be made in bronze i saw um i saw a tiger beetle in um Howarth, um last year and they're, they're amazing they're the ones that can run i think they're the fastest beetle that can run really fast you know but that that it was quite beautiful like, again it was like um out of the blue you know, this sort of beautiful little thing on the ground, you know, didn't expect it. I, I like the insects that are not so beautiful as well. Um, I, you know, the sort of house flies and well, things that are, that people more more likely go, yeah. <laughs> Even slugs. Slugs are fascinating things. <laughs> Have you made a slug? I've made ceramic slugs. I didn't mean <laughs> to make some bronze slugs. Um, I, I thought that would be quite an entertaining little sort of... Um, I, I do some toads. Uh, I, that's, that's Mrs. Toad. Hello, Mrs. Toad. Yeah, oh. he's good. She, she that's Mrs. Toad. <laughs> and I, I thought it would be a really nice thing that for anyone that buys a Mrs. Toad, uh, they should get a slug as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm not sure how that would have gone down. I, I never got round to it in the end. <laughs> Still time. <laughs> what's your um? So what's what's your soundtrack to the in your studio, John? Is there something that you listen to? I, I well, basically, what, I listen to Radio what? Six music now. Um, yeah. I've long since given up with the faff of trying to actually put different sounds on. 
I, I had an iPod a while ago. Uh, it, it got broken and that was kind of the end of that. And then Six Music uh, seems to have stolen my record collection and they just have <laughs> different people play it for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's lucky. It's, yeah, it's very lucky. It's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I, I used to be a radio, just Radio 4. And I think that comes back to what, what we were talking about earlier on of, um, you know, working on your own. Mm. Uh, I, I, I like, I mean, you know, sometimes I, I can't, sometimes I'm working, I've got um, earplugs in and I'm working with the grinder or whatever and it's it's loud and it's messy and you don't get to listen to the radio. That's not so much fun. Um, but a lot of the time, uh, yeah, I can just listen to Radio 4 and have a play on or whatever or, or follow documentaries uh or or more likely now it's it's radio six i listen to that all day they they have a chain idea as well I, i'm they quite do, yeah. the, the radcliffe maconey program yeah. um the longest running thematically linked chain yeah. <laughs> yeah i've been on that four times now <laughs> <laughs> really? yeah <laughs> jeff what speaking on live on radio uh twice twice live and twice on the answer phone I don't I don't often because well when it was in the afternoon it was brilliant for me because because I would have it on every day and I'd be working to it uh, and I don't often sort of break away uh, and interact because it's you, you get into doing what you're doing and you can listen to it and you can shout at the radio but actually being bothered to text or type on a computer or something yeah. that's a different game you, you're disrupting your work then uh, but there's been a couple of times that, that I did get on it and uh, mm. that, that was a lot of fun. I got a nice mention on um, Mar by um, Marianne Hobbs. Oh, right, yeah. The morning programme. Yeah, she just, you know, it's sort of, yeah, a lot of her work is kind of like, um, I think they had a Maker's Week or something like that. So Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to a party with that one. Uh, yeah. I, I heard about it. And I thought, oh, I should try and get involved. I should I should mention yeah. it. Did get around to it. So what did she say? Uh, she, well, um, I shared a picture of um, one of my big pieces I was working on. So she just said, "Oh, that was a fantastic." Thing. Um, <laughs> and she's got she's got a gorgeous voice. So it's just really nice to, to um, get my name <laughs> read yeah. out. This lovely voice. You know. <laughs> she said some nice things. Yeah. yeah. Did you record it? I mean, can I you send it, yeah. a ring a ringtone on your phone, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I, I recorded it. I think I did. Yeah. yeah. With the volume getting louder and louder. <laughs> is it is it on listen again? Was it was that because it's, it's on listen again at the time, yeah. And then I'll record that. It's not yeah. gone now, will it? It's only 30 days. Yeah. Yeah, it's gone now, yeah. So hopefully it's still on my phone somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're looking very Christmassy behind you, John. Um, yeah, I, I thought, you know, I'm in my scruffy workshop, so I should try and yeah. make some sort of effort to uh, be festive. Um so throwing some tinsel around uh, <laughs> that kind of yeah. doesn't it <laughs> yeah. yeah will you be in, in Hebden for this year? sorry toby will you be in hebden for this year it is um is it particularly we're, we're in hebden a, a lot more than usual because uh this time of year we normally do the christmas market uh, over in york mm -hmm. um which obviously not on which is a great shame uh, it's an effort though, so it's, it's it's quite a slog to do it. It's lovely, and it gets you really into a Christmassy spirit. Um, but it's best part of six weeks uh, standing out in the cold. So it's really nice being in in the warm, still making stuff. Uh, it's very very different Christmas for me. And then and then we're we're going to go into isolation. My grand's a hundred. My grand's a hundred this year. Wow. So definitely want to spend Christmas Day with my grand. Um, so we're, we're going to properly go into into a real isolation. Uh, that's the great thing about being self-employed. Uh, we, we can get a six foot pole and sort of poke it out the door at anyone that tries to come near us. <laughs> very, very different Christmas for me. And then, and then we're, ah, we're going to go into isolation. My grand we've got a, a bit of a loop with audio there. <laughs> He's still got the audio on. <laughs> So we're, we're going to properly Every, everyone to needs to mute the themselves. I think is the easiest way of doing this. We know about it. 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 We know about it.
think um, <laughs> you've done remarkably well for technical difficulties. I think it's been so well until the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> this has gone really well. No, it's been lovely. Uh, yeah, I've, watched, I've watched it all the way through. I've been watching Facebook at the mm. time that I wasn't on it, and it's it's just been absolutely wonderful. Like you know, hearing everyone's stories of uh, of what they make and what they do and and how they go about it, and all the little asides and everything. Mm -hmm. ah, it's been it's been fascinating. I, I saw a comment because um, I, I sort of jokingly said like, should we do a twenty four hour one? There's already someone who said yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But we wouldn't have to be on it for 24 hours. I mean, we could come back next day, maybe, to sort of wave at the end. <laughs> but uh, that, that would work, wouldn't it? We could pass it on. We, could, like we, could, we could set like it here in Medford Bridge, and then so it, could, it could go across the world, art across the world. Wow. You're thinking worldwide now, not, not just nationally. Ah, yeah, yeah. why not? <laughs> I knew the global domination was always part of your plan, John. There's not a lot of domination <laughs> happening with this. <laughs> no, it's been wonderful. So I no. I hope everyone watching at home has enjoyed it as much as we have taking part, because we've thoroughly enjoyed ourselves. We've loved it. Um, do tune in tomorrow on Instagram. If you were picking up earlier, um, all you have to do is follow the hashtag uh, hashtag Hebden makes Christmas and that starts at, at seven o'clock and that's on for two hours till nine o'clock on Instagram uh, you just follow follow that hashtag and you'll see all the makers putting all their posts up and there's going to be such a variety of amazing work it's all from artists that are local to Hebden Bridge the Calder Valley around and about and there's everything there's, there's from uh, little pocket money price pieces through to original artworks, bronze sculpture, uh, textiles, ceramics, uh, everything you can think of that people make. Someone in Hebden Bridge makes it. <laughs> so it's been wonderful. I don't know if everyone wants to unmute and say say Happy Christmas to everyone, because we'll we'll risk the fact that we go into a loop. <laughs> Oh, well. Happy Christmas. Happy, Happy Christmas. Christmas. Happy Christmas. 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 <laughs> Have a Are really good sure one. <laughs> Hope we see you tomorrow. Yes. Okay. <laughs> hey. All Bye. right. See you tomorrow. Bye. Tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.